Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. How are you? Surviving, sir. Oh. Um, I can see we're still short of one. Um, to make a quorum, members should just be patient. Oh, um, Memo Khotu has, has joined. We we can start. Um, Koliswa, can you flag the agenda? Good morning once again, uh, honorable members and the um, leadership of the two entities that we are going to engage today, which is um, NHPR. Can, can I request that we, we can, can I request that we, we mute our mic? DM Twitter. DM, mute your mic, please. I was Sorry, saying that. The, oh, let me welcome the the two leadership uh, of the two entities that we are going to engage today. Um, Shra and the um, NHFC. Um, I want to take this opportunity to welcome everybody in the meeting, um, in the team led by the DM and, and the DG. All of you, you're welcome uh, in the meeting. Um, this is a continuation of the meeting that we we had um it's a is too low okay we started with the uh, is... is it better now uh, uh, not good okay. yeah, is it better you can hear you can hear you okay okay can hear you, okay, can no. hear you loud and clear okay it's okay. better che. Okay, no, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I was saying this is a continuation of the meeting um, that we, we, we started uh, yesterday, engaging with the uh, department on their strategic plans. Um, yesterday, we, we, we've, we've uh, dealt with the two entities. Today, we'll, we'll finalize with the four entities to now from half past nine to from nine o'clock, half past nine to half past 12, uh, we'll be uh, engaging with Shra and uh, NHFC. And then uh, later on, then we finalize with the uh, EAB and um, CISOs. <clears throat> so thank you very much. Uh, members for attending the meeting. I'm going to ask us to observe a moment of silence for meditation or prayer as we thank the Almighty for having survived these days. Some people wanted to see these days, they couldn't. Um, those that doesn't believe in God, they will, med um, they will meditate and those that believe in God, will pray. Um, can we observe moment of silence? Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> let me take again the opportunity to, to welcome DM and the team to lead us um, um, in the presentation. Unknown caller. Um, <clears throat> to lead the, the presentation by welcoming the chairs and the CEOs of the entities as appear on the agenda. We are going to allow them to present both of them. And then <clears throat> later we, 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 we engage uh, with the presentation. Uh, DM Chwete. Morning. Good morning, Chair and the WIP honorable members. Uh, we are here again, Chair, today um, with uh, Director General Changana, who is leading the team. He will introduce the team. <clears throat> we met yesterday uh, to discuss two entities and the, the, the National Home Builders uh, Registration Council and the Housing Development Agency. And uh, today, Chair, we are here to present budget strategic plans and annual performance plans of the two ent entities you've already raised them, um, um, this Entity Social Housing Regulatory Authority, which is SHRA, and National Housing uh, uh, Finance Corporation. Chair, at the moment, I, I don't want to waste time because um, we we have a long day, and allow me to hand over to Director General and the Chairperson of the entities to present the details of their presentation. I'm sure they will be prepared to answer all the questions, and without wasting any time, Chair, I'm I'm thinking we have a very long day, and yesterday we had we had a very long long presentations, and I want to give you enough time to 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 answer questions and to and I, my team to answer questions and so without wasting time i'm going to hand over to director general to take us through and introduce the team thank you very much hello chairperson yes um, the apologies the apologies chairperson can I attend okay. the apology that I received? Okay. I received the apology from member Mushala, member Tafeni, and member August, and also member Siopo Sengwe. They're not uh, able to attend the meeting today, Chairperson. Okay. Thank you, colleagues. So <clears throat> the apologies have been noted. Um, let me welcome the, the DG. There's a hand, Chairperson, from the CFO. Chair, good morning. CFO. Good morning, good morning my dear. Chair, thank you very much. Good morning, honorable members. Good morning, DM. Uh, DG Changana is going to join slightly late. He is driving from another meeting, but he will join at a later stage. However, as DM has indicated, uh, we shall be led by the acting CEO of NHFC and the acting CEO of the Social Regulator Authority and, and, all, and the members that are present today. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, CFO. Um, The chairpersons of the board, are they in the meetings? Yes, uh, Akan Ramarumu is here. Okay, let's start, um, <clears throat> ma'am. Proceed, uh, Chair. To introduce your teams and
I am Pekane Ramarumo, uh, acting chairperson at NHFC. Um, I'm here with um, our acting CEO, Cesar Tati, and um, Mandu Mamatela, who's one of the executive directors. We are starting with Shira Chaperson according to the agenda. Oh, okay, sorry. Chair? Problem, uh, Koliso, because I've, yes. seen, I've invited them, they've responded, means that Shira is not read. Oh, not okay, read. all right, Chaperson, okay. We are, Chair. Oh, okay. Shira? Good morning, Chairperson, and members, and the teach and colleagues. Um, Chairperson, unfortunately, the Chairperson um, of the SHA couldn't make it, and the acting CEO um, had a family emergency this morning. So it's myself, Alice Buwani, the Corporate Services Manager, and uh, we also have Ahmed Bukhari, who's the Research Manager of the SHA. But we are really present to present our strategic plan and APP. Um, okay. Um, where is the chair? Because we've not got an apology. Um, I haven't received any indication of whether she's going to be able to join or not. So I'm waiting for a response from our company secretary. Okay, now you can see that you are not ready. Let's give okay. the NH, NH, uh, FC and Thank then you, uh, in the meantime, you can get uh, your chair. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> can we proceed, um, Meke Kana? Morning, Chair Person, again. Um, Chair Person? Yes. I've been requested by the broadcasters in parliament that if, uh, people must open their videos when they are talking. The presenters must open their videos, please. Okay. Um, Ms. Kekana, let's start uh, with you, acting chair. Yes. Uh, CEO and uh, Mandu, can you please open your videos and uh, let us proceed. Um, our CEO has made um, a presentation for today's meeting. Can we please ask him to proceed? Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Honorable members, members of the portfolio committee, the chair to the portfolio committee, uh, all protocol observed. I would like to share my presentation. Um, I've got a message here. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. Can I be enabled please through I, you chair? I did, I, I just did now. Okay, let's see. I'm still getting the same. Please try again. Why is Emma Power the co host? I don't know, um, Honorable Mashiho. It was a mistake. Uh, I just corrected it. What are you saying, Koliswa? Chair, are you able to see my presentation now? Yes, uh, can you wait, uh, C -C CEO? Koliswa, um, um, Mr. Mashiro, you didn't get what you are saying? No, I was, I was, trying, to make, uh, I was trying to assist uh, Mr. Tati, but he ticked her by mistake. Of, 
But you're not answering my question. I'm, I was asking. The question I is that, that uh, uh, member Powell is co-host. I'm saying, why is that? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying I tipped her by mistake. I was trying to assist uh, Mr. Tati to be a co-host so that she can he can be able to present. It was just a mistake, uh, Honorable Mashiko. Can we proceed? Thank you, Chairperson. Once again, we would like to thank for the invitation and the opportunity to present to you our both strategic plan and annual performance plan for this current financial period. There's three of us in this meeting from the executive level. I will present much more broadly on the mandate and the strategic purpose of the organization and where we are in terms of the broader transformation to becoming a human settlement development bank. From that point, then I will ask my colleague, uh, Group Strategy Executive Mandy Mamatela, to cover the strategic plan five years and the annual performance plan part. There's also a portion of this agenda that deals with the party. Sorry, you, or will you raise your voice? We can't hear you. Thank you, Chair. Am I audible now? Yes, that's better. Can you, can you hear now? Yes. Yes, uh, we can hear you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, as I was saying, I was just covering the outline that I will be covering more the broad mandate and strategic purpose of the organization. And then my colleagues, will, one will cover the strategic five-year plan and the annual uh, performance plan as well. The other chief financial officer executive will cover the budget part of it. As we all know, some are aware, National Housing Finance Corporation's broad mandate is about deepening and broadening market access to affordable housing finance yeah, uh, for rural, low income and middle income households. This institution has been around since 1996. As it progressed in 2018, uh, it was given an instruction to merge with two other institutions, Ralph and Nacha, which process was embarked upon and completed around 2018. It operates as a development finance institution, implying it needs to rally private sector and other capital for the purpose of support to the low income earners in the human settlement space. It remains 100% state owned. The asset base is about 6.2 billion and about 1.5 worth of borrowings. A self-sustaining organization is a schedule 3A uh, that must survive from on its, its income, income. Its mandate is a national one, and to date, our staff complement still remains since the merger at about 119 or so. I don't want to be repetitive in all of these, Chair. They are quite straightforward. I've, I've covered some of them. As we prepare to become HSTP, the aim really is to deliver sustainable, equitable, accessible value creation by effectively and efficiently providing quality funding and financial support for the development of integrated human settlement. This is a venture that is quite large and big, preparing us to be involved in what government policy usually refers to as creation of new cities or new settlement areas in an integrated fashion. So ours is to find a niche and ensure that the low income earners are not left behind and they are integrated in those human settlements. But the milestones is what I've just said from 1996 and another milestone was 2018. We hope this year the budget, uh, the, the cabinet will uh, look at the final uh, bill that needs to be passed to parliament so, so as to enable the establishment of the bank. Our value proposition, is one is the one that's targeted at social housing finance. This is where we work in tandem and in partnership with social housing uh, institution, where we provide funding alongside the grant money that they provide for household individuals that are earning between 1,500 and 15,000. 
And this is enacted in terms of the SRA Act that that partnership should pursue. We will discuss some of the challenges that we have as we present today. The other area is privately owned uh, rental Mr. housing. President, on a, just a minute, Chair, order. I don't know whether really this is the, 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 the only volume you can have because I hear nothing. It means I won't participate in this meeting. I'm glad I'm not can, the only can, one. We've, <clears throat> I've been quiet. I, I, I'm not the only one. I don't hear. Can, can you speak. check, uh, Honorable Mashiro and GM, can you check your gadgets and open, uh, increase the volume? Because I think you are the only one that you don't hear. Yes, Chair. I think uh, if they can check their gadgets, I agree. Because we can hear. I can hear clearly. Yes. Can, um, if you are using the iPad, there is uh, uh, two buttons uh, in your right-hand side. If you can just press it, it will increase the volumes. So let's proceed. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. The second post area of our activity is the privately owned rental housing as well as student accommodation finance where we support developers that are delivering uh, human settlements in that space. This one is not a subsidized environment. Uh, the other area of our involvement is what is called a subsidy and affordable housing finance. This is the bridging finance that we provide to contractors and developers who are involved in the provision of uh, PNG, or some people call it uh, RDP type houses and affordable housing. We also match that support by ensuring that the individuals can afford to acquire those units through the FLIS program, which I will cover just now. We also have another area that's called strategic partnerships and investment. This is the new area where we now partner with large developers or people who own large patches of land who can be consolidated into the formation of new cities and try and play a pivotal part depending on the needs in de-risking those projects, either to raise funding or to partner with people who've got large funding and those who can provide bulk infrastructure, et cetera. So we try to engage in those uh, developments and, and dialogue much early in the project life cycle so that by the time they get ready, we are also able to play a pivotal part in them. The other area is called incremental finance. This is traditional where we, we fund intermediaries who provide loans in small amounts, which banks do not do to afford people who've got pieces of land who want to put up their own units. This is self owned builders. And also those who might want to increase or expand and put develop or additional structures in their own existing units. But these people are operating in rural areas as well as urban, providing micro loans. The other part which came with the other two institutions is what is called program and fund management. In this area, we don't normally take a fund management role as mandated by the department from time to part, from time to time, depending on the nature of the support. Sometimes we partner with provinces where they seek to revamp or refurbish um, their rental units, and we coordinate the involvement of small contractors and become a paymaster for those uh, to the same extent that we partner with uh, metros in the same programs. The last one is the famous Finance Linked Individual Subsidy Program. This facility is a grant facility which enables those people who want to borrow either from the banks or even non-banking institutions to be able to afford, in other words, at least reduce the equity so they are not burdened with 100% borrowing. And it enables a lot of people to afford, in other words, reduce the installment, otherwise which they would not have afforded. So in the broad scheme of things, this is where a national housing operates. Just from a broad vision, purpose, and values, we meant to provide sustainable and transforming settlements with equal access to social services and amenities. 
Our purpose is to improve the accessibility for the lower income households through strategic partners, partnerships by, trans, by transforming human settlements and unlocking development impact. We've developed a new set of values to incorporate into the new HSDB, uh, which engender us and bind us together in terms of accountability, Ubuntu, uh, values of integrity, professionalism, excellence, collaboration, leadership, and innovation. Just to, to share the near future and connect it to the past, this slide attempts to show our traditional areas of financing on your left-hand side, where you see the Rotary on Finance and Fund Management. Those are our traditional spaces. On the right-hand side, you'll see where the products that are not being offered today, but we hope under the umbrella of the HSTB, we should be able to. We had historically as NHFC embarked on a structuring a what is called mortgage default indemnity or insurance, which is a product aimed to allow the banks or to enable, enable the banks to provide funding to people who are classified in their own criteria as high risky uh, borrowers so that they get the comfort and get used to lowering the threshold of where they normally lend. That product was canned for lack of capital about eight years or so ago. We wanting to revamp that. So we are in discussion in designing a new business case with Treasury to see if it can be funded. But what is important is that we cannot just revamp this product because there are new entrants now, like the capital of this world, the African bank who are attempting to serve that segment. So we want to test the demand side of it through a revised market study so that when we package this product, it's not just in vain when other private sector players are already servicing the segment. The other space for the bank would be looking at areas such as coordination, the promotion of uh, savings in order to, to save for, for segment, the advocacy role and try and provide the capacity support for emerging contractors and individuals who are actually professionals in serving this sector. So those are just the new areas that I'd like to highlight Chair, of where the bank seeks to be working on its own. There's many other activities that we're involved in internally in preparing ourselves to become a bank, but I'm not gonna be bothering the committee with those. At this stage, let me allow um, my colleague Mando, group strategy to take over from here. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mando, do you want me to unshare, to stop the sharing, or you should I run the slides for you? Mando, are you in the meeting? Chair, I saw Mandu and the attendees. Um, oh, Chair, I thought I had unmuted myself, but I was I was increasing the volume. <laughs> Apologies. Am I uh, audible? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Are you, are you going to share your own slide or should I? Please share the presentation, CEO. I, I will follow from your presentation. We are on slide 10 now. Okay. It, are you able to see Mandu? Are you? Oh, okay. No, we, we still, I think, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, Chairperson and uh, the DM, honorable members of the portfolio committee and all other colleagues. Um, I'm working on two screens, Chairperson, hence uh, you are seeing um, from the video, I'm appearing from my side because I'm, with, I'm using the screen monitor. Um, this slide is talking to our outcomes as we have them in the strategic plan. 
we've got four outcomes, uh, which are the functional, efficient, and integrated governance, improved delivery of affordable housing, increased access to affordable finance to enable end users to have appropriate, spatially just, and adequate housing, and increased penetration and participation for low-income households and businesses owned by PDIs. Uh, the second column uh, outlines the outcome indicators for each outcome. The baseline chair, as indicated here, is as at the time we were drawing the, the five-year strategic plan, and the five-year target outlines all uh, the targets that we have uh, per outcome. I would spend more detail on the APP chair with your permission, because in the APP, uh, it's giving a lot of detail um, in terms of the output and the output indicators. We can move to the next slide, CEO. This slide, Chair, um, it outlines our performance contribution, which we measure in terms of the impact on the ground. And this is talking to the housing opportunities that we create. And this is aligned to the, our offering um, value proposition that the slide that the CEO covered, that we do social housing units. And here we are indicating what we're planning to contribute over the five-year period. The first we, column- We is are losing you, ma'am. Oh, okay. Am I audible now? Okay. We And my, my volume is on 100%. Okay. We can Am I on the Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, maybe it's your gadget. We can also hear. Yes. Thank you. Chair, the second column indicates the targets as set out by the Department of Human Settlements. And the third column, we indicate our contribution towards those targets and it's outlined in terms of our product offering, like social housing, what will contribute towards private rental, affordable housing units, bridging finance and subsidy and FLES, and incremental housing. These are the housing opportunities. In the slide below, Chair, I will talk to the detail in terms of how much disbursement we will be doing, and it aligns to this contribution that we are showing here. Can you move on to the next slide, CEO? Uh, we are going to outline the APP chair, and in doing our annual performance plan for the 2021-22 financial year, we had an overview of the external environment uh, through a pastel model. Uh, an overview of our internal environment where we analyze our own strengths and weaknesses. And we will then outline the institutional performance in, in, in terms of the outcomes and outputs and the performance indicators. And the CEO will talk us through the budget and will cover the risks and mitigation, the, the key risks and how we'll mitigate those. Thanks, CEO. Just to give a, a, a snapshot of, of the current realities, uh, Chair, uh, this information we got from uh, State SA um, and some from the um, research partnerships that we work with, we do acknowledge that the housing market is still very fractured. Uh, despite all the efforts that have been made by, by government and the entities, and the citizens are still living in equitable access uh, to the benefits. And here we are really talking to being closer to work environments um, and transport nodes. And affordability is a problem. And as we are aware, because of the COVID currently and people losing jobs, uh, it has impacted on affordability. So the economic conditions are not favorable. As we know, we have come from a very slow economic growth and it was made worse by COVID implications. There are 81% 81, 81 of households are considered to be living in formal dwellings. 
13% are still considered to be an informal. And these are people who are living in backyard dwellings or, or in the, the, the shacks as, as we see them uh, sprawling across the country. The backlog is estimated to be 2.3 to 3.7 million. And this is growing at 178,000 per annum. And in the cities, there's a lot of migration, which is putting a lot of pressure, uh, both in terms of the infrastructure and the demand for household housing. 46% uh, of the household market are earning below 3,500. And this is the market that qualifies for the now current uh, free housing, which is a RDP house as we know it. 37% of households are any between 3,500 to 20,000. Uh, they are not eligible for RDP, but this is the, this is the market that the, the private sector is viewing them uh, as, as uh, risky. They are not able to afford, and this is the market that we are saving. And that 37%, 4.3% of them is the upper end, which is people earning between 15,000 to 20,000. And this is where the banks like to play a bigger role because they perceive the risk to be lesser here. Thank you, CEO. If we move to the pastel, what we did here, we did an analysis of the macroeconomic environment and we looked at the, all these factors that are, are highlighted. Uh, and just to look at it in terms of whether it's creating a barrier in us catalyzing the impact uh, in the low cost housing market. We looked at the legal factors, um, the issue around land reform and expropriation. Um, the private sector is, is raising that as as uh, an issue that is making them uncertain of what will pan out. Um, so we're just highlighting that it's casting a shadow in the market as it seeks clarity. There's still a lot of uh, protracted delays uh, within the municipal areas around legislation approval processes and this delay project uh, to be started on the ground. Uh, currently, we are looking at agreements that have been affected, and this we are talking mainly to the legal agreements, whether a household is, is being purchased and the banks have to make uh, concessions to because of the COVID and households losing jobs, or in terms of rental agreements, um, the rental market is in a deflation at this stage. We are finding that a lot of... Uh, the intermediaries in the space are not even increasing the rentals just because they would like to accommodate uh, what has happened with COVID. The vacancy rates are sitting at 16%, which is very high uh, in this market. So we're saying from a legal perspective, uh, the agreements and, and payment conditions are negatively impacted to both business and households. From an environmental factor perspective, there's an increased awareness of the ecological footprint uh, in terms of, of being and developing sustainable uh, products in the market. And here we are referring to the greening, the use of solar, and that is very uh, positive. And in the long run, it saves the household um, a lot of money in terms of paying for, for, for the services. Technological impact. The advent of the industrial revolution, it has brought new technologies uh, and innovation into the market, and it's enabling low, lower income households the ability to access affordable uh, finance. We are working on now starting to uh, make um, applications through, through cell phones which will really enable everybody across the country, even people in the rural areas. And this will also save people from traveling uh, to, to, towards the, the intermediaries. There's a lot of innovation in housing material for cheaper raw materials to build better quality housing. From the political factors, we're just highlighting that um, 
the new democracy has inherited the flawed system where people are isolated from economic activities. Uh, as we know, the low uh, to middle income households are in the outskirts of, of the economic hub. And the, the high levels of corruption and fraud within the, the public space has reduced investor confidence uh, in investing in this market. And from an economical factor, we are highlighting COVID, uh, the GDP that has contracted. Though we are in a low interest uh, market, it's, it's doing well in certain areas for people who would like to access uh, and buy their households. And thus we are seeing that the first market is doing well. Um, Unemployment is a factor that is not conducive to, to our business because it has affected affordability. And I've made point to the rental market being in a deflation mode. From sociological factors, rapid urbanization and population growth and migration to inner cities uh, is, is, um, is, is really just putting a lot of pressure. Uh, as people are, and we are seeing a lot of, of shakes being pulled around in the country as people are seeking accommodation. And we're saying the limited exposure to education and awareness of financial planning is also a factor. This is the perspective from the macroeconomic perspective and internal perspective. Here we've looked at ourselves from a structure operating model from our balance sheet and the strengths and weaknesses. Here, Chair, um, from a structure perspective, um, we're saying our governance structure is appropriate. Uh, our board is appropriately skilled and we have a, a good balance of male and female on the board and the executive management team as well. Our operating model has been aligned to ensure maximum development impact. And this is ourselves in this state of gearing ourselves to being HSDB. We are already operating in an aligned model. Uh, we have a strong geographical footprint across the country as we are working with our intermediaries. Uh, the strategic partnership that the CEO has talked to uh, we have made that a very core um, uh, pillar for our strategy that with the size of our balance sheet, we cannot do everything ourselves. So we always aim that for every one rent we put out there, we would like to at least attract four rents from the private sector so that our impact is we leverage private sector and we make a very meaningful impact. From a financial analysis, our balance sheet is good to leverage uh, debt, more debt. Uh, we are currently within a low debt to equity ratio. We are aware that there's good demand for our product offering and our entity is continuously monitoring the income cost to income ratio and with the uh, coming in and the, with the events that were put on us by COVID, we had to, to do a lot of cost cutting to ensure that we are not uh, burdening our income statement with costs. And when we've done that, when we're revising the budget. From a sort analysis perspective, we say that our strength is that with the three entities that have come together, there's a very strong knowledge uh, and the three are bringing in existing partnerships and stakeholder relations. This will stand us in good stead to achieve our objectives and maximize development. Um, we acknowledge the weaknesses because of the multiple systems that we are now integrating. Uh, there's a lot of progress that has been done in that regard, where we are now acquiring single system to service us, and this is work in progress. Uh, a lot of our work in certain areas was manual, and we had to align and, and digitize. We still recognize that change management is still critical, especially around all these processes uh, around systems and, and procedures that we are uh, embarking upon, that we need to be taking stuff along. 
and we acknowledge a threat from the external, which I've talked to in the previous slide in terms of the economic situation. Thank you, CEO. And now our performance is measured at program level, and this we align with the Human Settlements Department. We have five programs that we measure our performance against. So I will talk to each program in the next slide. Next slide, CEO. Excuse me. The first program being um, the we are not, Sorry, ma'am, we are not doing very well in time. Can you move with speed? Thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll do quickly. Under administration, uh, it's more around compliance, audit, risk, and implementing fraud and corruption reports. And this is the target that we have set. The middle one underestimated performance is the current financial year. We're just indicating where we are. And just to bring to the committee's attention, this is as at the time we drew the plan, things have changed as now we've concluded this financial year. The next slide, CEO. Chair, for this program, Integrated Human Settlements Planning and Development, we've got two sub-programs, which is strategic partnerships. And here we measure, we link it to the outcome and the output that we'd like to grow participation of private sector. We measure this through disbursements that we are doing to contribute. And to the right are the next three-year APP targets that we have set for ourselves. Next slide, CEO. Uh, this one is around subsidy housing finance, and this is where we provide bridging finance to developers and contractors. And these are the targets that we have set. As you can see, in the 2021 financial year, the, the estimate was low. But as I said, this is based at the time we're drawing the plan. So we presented this as it is in the APP. I will just highlight to the committee that we have exceeded the 2021 target. We are now sitting on an actual of 132 million uh, that we have dispersed in this area for subsidy housing. The next slide, CEO. Here it's rental and social housing program. And this is our contribution to, contribution to social housing and private rental. Also, the targets for 2021 was low because we did this uh, plan in the third quarter, but we have achieved 89 million in terms of social housing. Private rental, we haven't done well. It's now sitting at 14 million. Next slide, CEO. This one, uh, affordable housing program. Uh, we do affordable housing. We bridge contractors here as well. And we also measure incremental housing, where we give households an opportunity to incrementally build their house. And here is where we are uh, achieving our uh, impact through partnerships with some of the private sector in the market. Those are the three-year targets, and the middle one is indicating where we are in the current financial year. The next slide, CEO. Grant facilitation, this is the FLIS, uh, which is affording households an opportunity to own. And we measure this in the number of applications and the number of applications that we receive, that we, we do actually approve, and the value of the grant that has been disbursed to, to these um, households and how much we leverage from the private sector, which is the last row. And as you can see, uh, our disbursement of 200 million will attract about 2.1 billion from the private sector. Next slide, CEO. Program six talks to our sector transformation. Here we measure our disbursements to the triple BE compliant companies and also to designated groups, which are women and youth and people with disabled, people who are disabled, we measure what we disperse to them uh, as we'd like to empower them. And also through contractors that are PDIs, 
uh, we are setting up a incubator program fund to which will be targeted to incubate uh, new contractors coming on board. The next slide, CEO. Chair, these are the risks that we have identified. And for each risk, we've got a mitigation uh, in terms of how we will mitigate that risk. Um, I, will ask, I will not go through each detail. Um, we, we aim to, and, and each risk is linked to the outcome. Uh, and I will just pull one from each one. Uh, the first one, qualified audit opinion, and we plan to comply with all regulatory uh, regulation uh, in improving delivery of housing, failure to deliver on targets in the shareholders mandate, we're having a semi-annual engagement with the shareholder and expectations are always aligned and where we are not meeting targets, uh, we do provide uh, turnaround plans and this is an on, on an ongoing basis. Ability to attract, um, inability to attract or establish suitable developers. Uh, we, we, we do a provincial targeted stakeholder engagement and for the first market, we are engaging through social media platforms to educate uh, the stakeholders about our product offering. And the last one, uh, which is linked to the outcome of increased penetration or participation of low to middle income markets. The risk there is an inability to increase partic participation due to limited knowledge and awareness of NHFC offering. And we've implemented the strategies as, that I've spoken to. Uh, and in developing consumer education, we are developing a program with the South African Saving Institute, which will be rolling out in the second quarter. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm going to hand over to the CEO to talk us through the budget. Over to you, CEO, uh, CFO. CFO, can you just summarize in five minutes? Because, uh, yeah. We're running okay. out of time. Thank you, Chair. Okay, Chair, uh, just, um, we can skip the slide, CEO. Just move on to the next one. I think, Chair, just to give um, an indication to the members, what we have done, obviously, from a budget perspective is that we have um, based them on the assumptions. The key assumption is really around um, the interest rates. And I think it's quite important to understand from an NHFC perspective, interest Maybe rates... Okay. Sorry? The video. Oh, the video, sorry, Chair. Are you able to see me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so I was saying from an NHFC perspective, what's quite important to understand is that the impact of interest rates change um, our bottom line quite significantly because 90% of our lending book is linked to the prime interest rate. So with every 1% change in interest rates, um, we see an impact of about 20 million rand um, going through the bottom line. So I think if you see- um, um, uh, go to the next page. Network is not, not, you are not- I'm not what, sorry? Hello, can you hear me? I'm on 100%, my volume is on 100%. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, all right. Okay, so um, like I was saying, if we just look at the forecasted results, um, just um, from a 2021 perspective, we were severely impacted by uh, the change in the repo rate. Um, I mean, repo was cut to about 3.75% um, in a measure to revive the economy. So obviously that impacted us quite significantly. If you look at the NHFC costs, NHFC costs on uh, average are about 60% fixed. So that means in the short term, we are unable to react quite quickly to, to a change in costs. So therefore, from a forecasted perspective, um, our surplus for the year did decline from our 2020 period, given those two impacts. Another key thing is really around the impairments. The impairments are there um, as a measure to, 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 to understand the performance of the book. And I think Mandu has spoken to the negative 
impact that um, our um, our customer base has has had around COVID. And obviously, from a loan perspective, we have to provide for impairments. Whilst this number is a bit fluid at the moment, we might see an uplift in our income statement, um, both from a forecasted perspective. Um, in the budget of 2022, right, um, we have, I think what is notable is that we had, when we did the budget, we had uh, forecasted about nearly 100 million in terms of impairments for the impact of COVID, you know, the ripple effects. But I think given where we see the book is performing, this might come down quite significantly and that the increase in our surplus for the year will uh, increase quite substantially. The impact of uh, the impairments is quite big. I mean, 100 million is quite a substantial amount um, that will come um, back onto the bottom line. I think obviously just in terms of our expenses, one of the key things there is that we have forecasted for um, so for um, some CapEx items. Um, I think from the NHFC perspective, from an IT, especially on the IT front, um, we were not we are not appropriately um, um, geared up. Um, we have very disparate systems um, and we are not integrated. And for us to be able to uh, perform more efficiently, it's quite important that we have the appropriate systems. So we have budgeted um, a, 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 a decent amount, I think in terms of enterprise architecture, in terms of our system modernization, et cetera. Um, and also in terms of the FLIS system as well, um, about 8 million Rand we have put forward uh, in terms of um, making sure that we have a system that is seamless, that will be able to talk to the banks um, to ensure that we meet our targets um, on that end. And Chair, I will pause there, I think is my five minutes up. Okay, if we can just go to the last, sorry Chair, the last, um, the, yes, this slide. I think what I just wanted to highlight here is just in terms of the credit loss ratio. In terms of the credit loss ratio um, and the cost to income ratio, we see we have increased quite significantly from a cost to income ratio. And that is specifically because of what I've spoken about. We have a high fixed cost, um, sorry, we have a fixed cost uh, from an expense base, but from an income level, what happens is when interest rate uh, drops, um, our book does, uh, our income does decline. But obviously over the period as we increase our loans and interest rates come up, this is set to change. So as you see, um, looking forward from 2022 going forward to 2024, we see that the cost to income ratio changes significantly from the budgeted 73% to about 56% in the 2024 period. I think from a credit loss ratio as well, this one we really are waiting to see how um, our book is going to pan out um, in terms of um, in terms of credit loss ratios and, and, and the impairments that will come through. And I think obviously from a net uh, loan book growth, I think obviously with COVID, if you see from an um, actual perspective, we had about a basically a flat negative 1% from a 2020 uh, perspective. Um, but we see that obviously from an uptick perspective, we are looking to grow quite significantly um, from 5% in the forecast to about 11% year on year in 2024. Thank you, Chair. I think I'll stop there. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, CO, you want to close the presentation? Thank you, Chair. Uh, where's my video? That, that is the picture that we've portrayed to you. Um, as you can see, there has been an impact in relation to the, the COVID. We've been asked to revise even those figures downwards, which we have. We are now already moving into the new chapter. Hopefully, as the indications are already beginning to show, there is better outlook on the economic growth side that normally does impact on the demand side of our business. And we hope that will make an improvement for this current financial period. Uh, but I think the CFO has done enough to just share with the committee what impact has the interest rate drop had. And because of the COVID, also the non-performing loans um, 
but interestingly, and what we are pleased with with the board is that at least we are still sustainable and we can forecast that we'll end the year still on a positive outcome. Although the ratios will be uh, out of kilter, but at least we are still in the, uh, in the black. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, CEO and the team. Uh, Shra. Chairperson, um, our chair of the Shra um, indicated that he will submit an apology to the committee. So, Chairperson, may I then proceed with the presentation? Yes, proceed, uh, ma'am. Thank you. That's not the one. I'm just loading the presentation. Oh, there. There's our chairperson, uh, chair. Let me give you an opportunity. Chair, you're welcome. She's still joining, chairperson. Not through yet. Okay, see so you all. Let's proceed in the meantime. Yes. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I will skip on the first slide and go to the second slide, Chairperson, as you're about to uh, present both the strategic plan and the APP summary. Um, the portfolio committee. So we'll deal with the purpose, the mandate, the impact outcomes, and chair at the end will be the discussion. Um, Chairperson, the next slide, the legislative framework of the SHRA chair hasn't changed. We are still using um, the same legislative um, framework. Um, Chairperson, and then the next slide, then talk to um, the Social Housing Act, um, it continues, and then it goes to um, the function chair of the SHA, which basically has three uh, pillars to invest um, in social housing sector to enable by transforming the sector so that we have more players in the social housing sector and to regulate, to ensure that we have sustainable uh, projects and to ensure that the beneficiaries that are targeted are the ones that are occupying social housing institutions. So our functions of the SHRA still haven't changed, they're still within our mandate. But in the next slide, um, there has been changes from the previous um, <clears throat> strategic plan. We, we have the statement now on the impact statement, which is a transformed, compliant and sustainable social housing. So this will be our focus for the next five years and especially on transformation and, and compliance. So we've also changed our vision. Um, our vision previously read as a thought leader, stimulator and regulator of world class. Um, but then we aligned our vision to human settlement to then read as to create an integrated South Africa um, where citizens live in a live a good quality life okay? and um, in a well-located and affordable quality rental homes. So okay, even if we, we go to the broader citizenry, we are only contributing to the extent of um, social housing units. 
And we've also changed our mission to, to also be aligned to the quality of housing for lower and middle income um, household. Again, in an in integrated uh, settlement by investing in it, um, enabling and regulating, and of course, transforming um, the social housing for rental. So our values haven't changed. They are still the same as the previous year which is um, service or stewardship, zealousness, share, connectedness and interconnectedness of the staff members. Um, we uphold accountability within um, the entity and we also view our human being as holistic being. Okay, our um, outcomes have also been um, reworded and, and enhanced so that um, we are aligned to the departments one, especially when you come to a administration where we should have a functional, efficient in um, our integrated um, government. Quality, the second one, which invests quality, uh, affordable social housing for rental um, delivered in strategically located uh, areas. And then uh, in terms of enabling, we then have two out comes the talk to it is an enhanced performance of the query agents and increased capacity to uh, municipalities and provinces to deliver social housing. And then to regulate chairperson, our focus and our outcome that you're looking is that it, the social housing um, sector is effectively regulated. And the last one, is a transformed social housing sector value chain. I will then zoom into the transformed social housing sector value chain because that's been um, our key uh, focus, especially when it comes to transformation of estimated individuals. Uh, uh, okay. And then um, when we look at indicators that spoke to the outcomes, the first one is the external audit outcome. Of course, um, everyone at the SRA has to contribute to an unqualified audit opinion. It's not just finance, um, it's ensuring that you're all compliant. And um, the next key one here person is a stakeholder satisfaction index. So here we are establishing whether SHRA is known, is delivering according to its mandate. Um, it's looking at the needs of all the stakeholders and then how do we then respond? How do we bring the key ones on board to assist us so that we are able to deliver social housing. The second one, which is um, the affordable quality and the indicator chair will be the number of social housing that have been delivered in strategically located areas. And here, when we look at uh, our enhanced performance um, of the delivery agents, which is both SHIs, currently um, the other delivery agents and the MOE, uh, is the percentage of delivery um, agents that have received institution grant. And here, this is just to support them and um, to capacitate them areas where um, they find challenges. And uh, you'll also uh, look at, at entry, at applicants, aspiring applicants on how we ca capacitate them to then come into the social housing pipeline. And then chairperson increased capacity to municipalities. Um, we look at the number of municipalities um, capacitated uh, for social housing. So we are awakening the interest in the various municipalities to assist us with land, to assist us um, with getting statutory um, approvals done on time so that the projects can break ground because that's one of the key things that um, creates blockages in delivery um, and making sure that they do have social housing in their ITP uh, chairperson. So this year, um, we've already signed about eight MOUs with the municipalities so that they come on board, including the province's chairperson. And then outcome number five, um, to effectively regulate social housing, so this has been a problem for quite a while, uh, but now we have uh, managed to review the policies, we managed to review the framework. Um, we also have social housing that we're looking into and we also increase capacitation, uh, especially internal purpose. 
And then um, the sixth one that talks to a transformation. Um, here we have a subscribed to property transformation. Uh, it's a new indicator this year. Now we're setting up um, our indicators as social housing because um, they are quite unique to social housing and included them in the chapter. So um, it will going to, it's going to assist us to create a baseline, analyze exactly what is needed again as we move forward, what is needed in, in transforming the sector and the future. And then Chairperson will talk to the institutional analysis. Um, so Chairperson, I, I think I want to, on this particular slide, um, assuming that I can take it as red, but then pick up salient factors, uh, is that we considered quite a few things because of the advent of it. Um, especially, we look at number three, that you managed to work simply under lockdown. So at least we have um, staff members who were quite agile. Um, nothing came to a standstill. And chairperson, of course, we're also looking at upscaling the delivery. Um, we had training programs implemented. And we've received good feedback from participants, including provinces, municipal officials, and um, our department. Um, chairperson, as I've earlier indicated, we had municipal support projects and incubation um, project implementation where municipalities are already participating. Um, and then chairperson, if we look at failures or weaknesses, um, is the accreditation process that yields in desired results that they care we attended to it uh, by introducing various interventions, but at that um, point in time, we still need to have it at our complete control. Um, then we look at compliance monitoring. Uh, it's too paper-based. Uh, paper we need to um, be on site, chairperson, because what we do is we receive um, reports and we analyze it, but we we, up, we started appreciating the fact that each SHI that reports or delivery agent, um, they've got a dynamic way of uh, keeping their records. Find that the information that you analyze, either that it's aggregated or disaggregated, and it doesn't quite fit well with uh, the way we report. So we then made a conscious decision that we then go down and into the various projects and understand how they report and make them understand why we want certain information packaged in a particular way. And then Chairperson, the other one, um, we then also looked at um, the fact that our regulatory function um, is not performing effectively uh, and also has a um, level of poor communication that is a Managed to improve, but we're getting there, Chairperson. We're not entirely there yet. And the last one um, that I want to bring up is um, that the SHRA is not viewed as a welcoming environment for new entrants, um, Chairperson, or applicants. It's perceived that it's not um, supporting transformation. Chairperson, indeed, um, our chair has raised this with us on, on several occasions that um, our application process is quite laborious and some people lose interest um, and some don't have the capacity to actually submit all the documentation that um, to be submitted. So we still look into it. Um, the, the reason why the SHRA has been so persistent and consistent on that uh, confirmation um, stability but chairperson, the other thing that you have, it then becomes a threat to um, the budget confirmation. Indeed, it is confirmed. We have it over the MTF period. But if you look at the number of social housing need to deliver over the MTF period, um, the amount required for, for grant quantum far exceeds our allocation. So that becomes a bit of a a threat for a business continuity. And then, um, Chairperson, on this one, the last one that I just want to uh, highlight is the lack of an effective ICT strategy. Chairperson, it's um, 
the automation of all the processes and ensuring that there's a system which uh, will integrate the external user um, and, and the SHRA and constantly uh, give feedback to the applicant on where the application process is. So Chair, we've managed to um, finish three modules. We are yet to finish the others so that uh, we go live and it becomes a bit easier um, and communication is much better when, when we then act with applicants uh, outside service. Um, uh, and then we look at the focus areas and priorities in um, the next slide. Um, so the organizational structure review. Um, so we haven't done the uh, scientific organizational structure review as yet to determine whether the positions that we have are appropriate for the mandate. They have been appropriate so far. But what we have done, we have added the skills and the positions that are required to um, improve on a transformation to, to improve on regulating the housing sector. Um, and we've also uh, have the PRO position, which was never there before. Um, the second one, chairperson, is the culture of caring and being part of the solution. Chairperson, um, we want to live by um, the statement Every one of us at the SHRA, the first question that you need to ask is how can I help or how can I assist you? Be it is internal or external, so that uh, everything is transparent, fair, and uh, of high integrity chairperson. And the third one is to drive the real um, on the ground transformation. Chairperson, like I said earlier on, we want to assist uh, startups. Um, we also have, um, we need to have our business units understanding what transformation is and, and making sure that in each and every transaction or act or initiative that an official of the start takes, um, at the back of the mind, there should be transformation uh, embedded in, in, in there. And then chair, the last one is we just need to uh, determine how best to use the resources to achieve transformation also within the SRA because of the various layers of stakeholders that we deal with the SRA, in the SRA. Some of the stakeholders that we deal with are not in the SRA's control. As we give the social housing a grand quantum, um, we will say that, that grand quantum is given to a social housing or an ODA that is transformed. However, they further go and appoint their professional team and when they appoint professional team chairperson, we at this stage haven't had, um, haven't actually performed to see how far the professional team is transformed. So that leg uh, chairperson to be um, monitored and watched. Um, and then chairperson, um, the fourth one is to implement a council approved a stakeholder management and communication strategy chairperson. Um, this is to create awareness about the SHRA, uh, assist us in what, you can, what is it the SHRA can do. And um, most importantly, that has been raised by our chairperson is that we should be a caring SHRA that also cares about the beneficiary, not only our delivery agent. So our strategy, our communication strategy will not just be uh, focused on business, um, or investment in, in social housing. But you also need to go into community, um, tell them about social housing, tell them about um, social housing. It's a, it's a transitional housing, it's not necessarily a rent to buy at the moment, uh, so that they understand the different packages, products offered by human settlement. Uh, I think we're trying to, be, to proactively avoid um, the dependency from our community that social housing doesn't serve their people. Um, the fifth one, Chairperson, is to strengthen the regulatory function. As I've, I've spoken to it, we are indeed uh, going to be a regulator now. Um, and then improve on the SHI accreditation process. Like I said, we need to assist those who are applying and then have um, the, the ones who have land issue rights. And then the last one would be a credible uh, pipeline 
that will deliver the number of social housing that we um, actually need or meet our MCSF target. The last one, Chairperson, um, our last focus area is to strengthen um, human capital and internal system. So, Chair is the IT strategy, and we also need to ensure that all the people are fair with the system and they know how it works. And two, um, succession planning, Chairperson, um, transferring of skills from external service providers um, when they do their assessment on our accreditation applicants. And then chairperson, the MCSF of 2019. Um, chair, we had a total of 27,000 units uh, for MCSF 2019. We only managed to deliver 13,968. But what is pleasing chairperson is the graph that at the date 31st March 2019 is that we still had 9,703 um, units under construction and 12,477 um, 12, in planning. Um, leaving a surplus if all uh, variables were met, we would have actually um, exceeded that target by 8,715. However, will then move all those into our current MTSF because already we have missed it. Person. So um, at the moment, say, uh, we have also, um, I think we've accredited about uh, 4,000 units to date, uh, and, then, and then I'll talk to it again later. And then, Chair, then we go down to um, performance information, uh, which is the APP in the targets, Chair. You're not and again, doing very well in time, ma'am. Can you push? Okay. Chairperson, uh, the SHRA has got five programs um, exactly to deal with what has been mandated to the SHRA, which is enable, um, invest, and regulate chairperson. So each program is responsible for uh, carrying out that part of the mandate. Chairperson, as earlier indicated by uh, NHFC, the functional efficient is the same. We also look at the same uh, uh, output. Uh, I won't even look at that, Chairperson. And um, on, on this particular slide, Chair, it is, I wanted to do two. Okay. So, Chair, I've spoken to all of these uh, indicators here. Um, just to ensure that the proper tenants are there, Chair, we have um, tenancy audits. Um, maybe, Chair, I must just look at the new indicators. Um, 5.2 is accrediting of a of additionally fully accredited SHI. So a person, a SHI become fully accredited if they meet all the, the ratios. But because of COVID, um, we had four that has dropped because they couldn't meet. Now we are targeting that in the outer years, we assist them to get back to where they were because um, the vacancy rate um, areas, non condition of rental, uh, really puts them down, Chairperson. So it's something that you need to focus on and assist them going forward. And Chairperson uh, 5.4, we are also looking at the safety and security of tenants. Uh, it covers a whole lot of things, Chairperson, um, from ensuring that all vulnerable people are catered for in the buildings, the fire drills are all fine. Um, and then Chair, on the next slide, we are, the next slide is transformation chairperson. So here we are more um, proactive because we're looking at new project accreditation as opposed to them just a, like it's currently being done, people are just applying. Now we need to go out there to ensure that uh, we've got the right transformed applying who are going to get the grant from the SHRA. Um, Chairperson, there's no new indicator on this one, so I will move on. Um, here you can see that we are um, looking into transformation because um, the new indicator is 28, in 2019, and we're still hoping to um, then achieve more when it comes to that. Um, the other one, Chairperson, here is that the transform the value chain, like I said earlier on, we've got new indicators um, 
for 2021 chairperson so that we can um, go deeper into our transformation and be able to, to uh, develop strategy. We cannot develop a strategy if we don't know what is happening in the ground and how uh, we can really transform. Um, risk chairperson, we looking at inadequate or insufficient resources for the shrub. Uh, to meet insufficient resources to meet uh, the delivery targets chairperson, which is what I've mentioned earlier on. Um, inability to upscale um, delivery of social housing. We have insufficient uh, capex, uh, failure to implement um, social housing policy chairperson. Uh, unavailability of strategically located lands. This is um, our most uh, Achilles tenant person when it comes to Isra because of land availability. Um, that's the reason why we are working with uh, municipalities uh, closely and collaborating those um, relationships. And then again, uh, the next one talks to the municipality and capacitating them. Um, and we also need to strengthen um, the regulation of the sector, which I've spoken to earlier on. Uh, most importantly, chairperson, um, the construction industry is just open to foreign corruption. We just need to uh, manage and keep our eyes on, on the chairperson. And the last one, Chair, um, our budget is. Um, as contained in the screen chair, um, but we know that we don't have sufficient funds when we look at outer years, chairperson, um, and the growth rate is um, quite different. However, chairperson, uh, we just need to um, manage our commitment schedule as we were um, advised by the department. And chair, next slide then talks to um, the line items. You will notice that our professional uh, services have been the highest cost driver compared to others is because we're using um, professional consultants to assist us do assessment, but we're going to phase them out. That's the reason why there's a deadline. Uh, instead of consultant, we'll uh, increase our staff complement check. Okay. Um, I will leave it at that, chairperson. Oh, maybe I must just read a, a recommendation. Uh, okay, is that you note our strategic plan for uh, 2020 to 2025 and our annual performance plan for 2022, including the budget that is uh, that goes with the two plans. So, person, I will leave that, then we have the QA session. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shra. Um, is the chairperson joined the meeting? Because of time, uh, we will allow her to, to when we when members ask uh, questions, if he wants to respond, and she, uh, she should do that. Uh, let me take this opportunity to welcome all the presentation and and invite members to talk to the <coughs> to the presentation. Honorable members, can I note hands that wants to talk to the both the presentations? Uh, so far, I can see two hands only. Honorable Mkhotu, um, followed by Honorable Zeke. And Honorable Brutus, Butas, yes, and Honorable Mvana. As I've uh, indicated, can we proceed? Honorable Mkhotu. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, my first question will be directed to NHFC, uh, the first questions. There is a fundamental difference between 
the number and nature of budget programs contained in the ENE and the programs contained in the APP. What are the reasons for these differences? And are there any plans to reconcile the budget information with the, with the entities programs for improved monitoring and comparison of budget spending performance? Under program one, while the quarterly targets are typically incremental for the percentage of implementation of plans or reports, the target related to internal audit reports is set at 50% completion for Q2 and Q3. What are the reasons for this? Why is program three informal settlement upgrading program included as a program in the APP, but not applicable to the NHFC? What are the most recent developments that the NHFC can report on the establishment of the Human Settlement Development Bank. In terms of the negative economic impacts of the pandemic, the income of the NHFC is sensitive to changes in interest rates and other economic indicators that have an impact on housing projects. Uh, more than 90% of the entity's lending book is linked to the prime lending rate. Rate cuts have a significant impact on the entity's profitability as every 1% reduction reduces the bottom line by an estimated 20 million. What strategies are being considered and implemented by the NHFC to improve its financial resilience and profitability. And now I'm directing my other questions to Shra. Which municipalities are being earmarked for assistance during 2021 to 2022 financial year? What is the current status of the municipal support program in program four? What options are currently being considered and which actions are taken to ensure that the targets in program four you know, are achieved? Will additional funds be appropriated to this target? What is the status of the social housing growth plan in program four? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Mukhotu, Honorable Tseke. Thank you, Chairperson, and let me appreciate the presentation by the two entities, um, NHFC and, and, and SHRA Chair. Uh, my first question will go to the NHFC um, um, for 2021-2022, uh, the target for the percentage of disbursement to previously disadvantaged groups on managed programs was changed to rather reflect the monetary value of disbursement compared to percentage. What are the reasons for that? And to Shra, um, can the entity explain to the committee why uh, were the following items not included in the current budget? One, additional human resource identified in the revised organizational structure, including your chief risk officer, your social housing management analyst, your build environment analyst, your business analyst, your compliance administrator, your project uh, accreditation administrator, and your regulation manager. Two, the deployment of an automated and integrated IT system as per your ICT strategy to drive the SHRAS communication strategy and brand awareness through the implementation of the approved uh, communication and stakeholder management strategy and carrying out of building condition assessment. Can the entity explain to the committee why the following items? are not included in their current uh, budget. Thanks, Chair. Those are my three questions. Thank you, Honorable uh, Zeki.
Uh, thank you, Chair. Chair on H N H on the banking one. Sorry, I missed the alphabet. Uh, there's an area where the presenter I think was talking about uh, the socio-economic, uh, the COVID, and the retail, and all those. You mentioned something about uh, the response to commercial banks. Can you repeat that? I did not get that, where he talks about the commercial bank uh, response to, to this uh, housing bank. And uh, I must appreciate, I'm impressed about the quality of, uh, of the bank. And then I'm not sure whether this is to the DG or the minister, deputy minister. How far are we with the, this law, Chair? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, honorable, thank you, Honorable Mbana. Thanks, Chair. Uh, I'm also man interested in terms of the bank. Can NHFC tell us that, um, do they see this assisting the low and middle income class or do they see it having difficulties? Because I'm also thinking about this at that uh, Honorable Tseki is talking about understanding the, the, the circumstances during the COVID. It's, it was not difficult. I mean, it was not easy for everyone to, to, to assist on this. But, but can, can I just get that because other questions have been raised. On Shra, um, I'm also impressed on how they, they, they do things. But what worries me is that there are lots of challenges. And in those challenges, there were challenges more than uh, solutions. Maybe if they can ch tell us, maybe in, in, in one of the challenges that they are experiencing on how are they going to resolve them? Of course, in some Hello, cases. Vanna, thanks. Can you open your 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 camera? We are on we are, we are on live and uh, so please, as you members speak, uh, they should uh, open their cameras. Thanks, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, I, I'm on Sha now. I was just asking from Sha. Maybe it was going to be good for us when they put the challenges and also put the solutions on how they think they will resolve these challenges that they are experiencing. Otherwise, in some other areas, I'm a little bit impressed because most of them, they are all talking about this uh, the, during the period that the COVID and the lockdown was was, was um was established, Okanye was active, which we understand all of us on that. Uh, yeah, thanks, Chair. Let me stop there. I'll come back if you give us the second chance. Thanks. Thank you, Honorable Mbana. Honorable Mashefo. Uh, thanks, Jefferson. Uh, I'm struggling, yeah? Okay, open your camera if you can. Okay. It's very... <laughs> Thank you very much. I think I, I'm trying to do that. It is uh, sitting somewhere in the corner. Um, I can't even see myself. <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks, Chair. The, remember, I did raise earlier on that uh, I'm struggling to get what the, the members were said to want to take me through uh, how to, to 
widen my camera, but I mean, my volume, it couldn't up until I have to change the, the gadget. And I couldn't, have, I have lost quite a lot of um, the input has made. But the, it doesn't make uh, the, uh, uh, and, and I want to echo the sentiment the uh, Babu uh, member um, Seiki, that there is an element of uh, uh, of of uh, of, of um, very great improvement on the on the on the on the content, the posture, and the reporting processes. But with that in mind, chair, I just as 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 a, as a, as a, as a const as a consistent uh, 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 cautioning from my side, I I I don't. Get I just switch off your camera. Oh, okay. Honorable Mashiru, uh, the, 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 the preparatory processes that were made building up to. Uh, Honorable Mashiru, we're losing you. The best way would be okay. to close yeah. your camera. You, are, you can okay. then be allowed to close your camera so that you can increase your sound. I'm gone. Shepherdson, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, proceed. OK. Uh, I was saying, as just a precautionary concern, not a concern, just to say that because of all the pre problems that the, the, both the, 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 the entities are, are, are reporting onto, I don't get a sense of whether are we going to hit the ground running or because yesterday, on the other side, I want to repeat that question. That because this is an APP. On the APP, it is something that you are committing yourself to, that you are going to do, building for the for the incoming year. But you are not telling us whether preparatory work has been done. That indeed, that which you are committing to do. Remember, on, on a number of issues, there are things that you did not meet in the previous term of office, and we understand that maybe it might not. It might have been on the basis of it not being well prepared on these ones because we want to to better where we were did we do preparatory processes that we are going to be hitting the ground running as and when that has been done but otherwise i think as as, as a as, as a material preparatory process if it is done the the apps are are, are, are well understood and, and clear to to, to to can be implemented from my point of view the majority of questions have been asked, especially by comrade uh, 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 and, and, and uh, I agree with them. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Tseke, you're still raising your hand. No, Chair, I forgot to lower the hand. Uh, my apology. Okay. Um, just to, um, I've got only one question to add on what members have asked on the, the question goes to the DM. Um, I can see that uh, there are a lot of acting people uh, just to check um, or DG. Uh, we knew that uh, uh, some of the officials, um, their contract are ending. Um, when are we intend to to fight to finalize the appointment, particularly with the bank, because um, <laughs> the bank uh, we needed to to operate as soon as possible, and 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 you need the bill to finalize the process of establishing the bank. And now you have uh, acting chair, acting um, CEO. 
So just to check how far is the process, can, can we get commitment that uh, the process would be finalized as soon as possible? And, and, and the second element issue is on the, the, the partnership and investment on, 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 on the, uh, that, that the bank would create. And I can see that um, they're targeting private investors, developers. <laughs> and, and I didn't get it clearly. I heard that they, are, they will have the, the, the contractor incubator, but um, on developers, majority of them, they are white. And, and I didn't get uh, whether they will have a, um, and men in particular. Um, so we should, we should then be able to um, target and support um, uh, women and uh, people with disability and youth because this country, majority of, uh, of Come people. Here, okay. um, <clears throat> so, 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 I think it's important that uh, um, we we look at that, uh, and and with Shra and um, as indicated that too, um, we 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 welcome the presentation, the the posture, um, and and just to to add what uh, uh, Honorable Mbana has raised that. Uh, the, the, the entity has identified a lot of uh, issues that need to be tackled by the entity, but we, we, we hope there will be solutions for those issues. Um, and we welcome the commitment um, of transformation. It's long overdue. So let me allow uh, both chairs, um, we'll start with the um, NHFC and then um, and the CEO responds to the questions as raised by members, and then we'll then go to Shra. And then DM, um, DM, you can then close or DG. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, let me take this opportunity to thank you for uh, inviting an HFC to this meeting. Um, I must say uh, we've gone a long way in terms of restructuring uh, the organization, merging three entities. Uh, that has not been a child's play. And now uh, we are busy uh, strengthening um, the systems, the structure, so that uh, we can be efficient, reliable, and uh, again, this is another process. And in terms of the triple BB, we are driving uh, two processes. Uh, one is in terms of our improvement of uh, the scorecards. We are partnering with strategic partners like property sector, uh, Black Business Council, um, uh, developers, Obviously, um, within that whole process, we need to empower the previously disadvantaged women and uh, uh, youths. Um, we are very um, particularly interesting, interested in making sure that our youth get some kind of support to enter this, this market. And as you know, um, our business is finance. And uh, we are trying to broaden you know, credit to those who normally not get credit. So um, I must mention from the outset that uh, it's not easy, but uh, we are trying our best. Uh, one of the innovative programs that we will have introduced is with regard to um, technology where uh, we have uh, set aside about 8 million to change the systems that have been used 
in the past which were cons uh, constricting and we are trying to broaden especially the program first first because we see it as a so solutions to 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 broadening access to those who normally not qualify for rdp and they would also not qualify for bonds uh with the banks and that is where um our market as nhfc is and uh, with the technology that we are uh, improving within the organization uh, we improving the digital marketing you know database management procurement including um, the management of staff which is going to 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 be more technical than before we're not going to be using you know um what can i say uh rudimentary processes anymore and that is going to bring a lot more business and as i was looking at our app especially with flips uh, we have not done well last year because of the COVID. but uh, in the next financial year uh, our staff are uh estimating over 30,000 units just with, with with that program i'm just mentioning um one innovative project that we are uh, embarking upon and and of course you know uh, for every rent that we put into the market we are inviting um business out there to bring you know or uh, four rents so if we put in a million they can bring in Four million. I mean, that is to us. We see that uh, we are getting there. It will take uh, innovation. It will take uh, more energy, uh, but we need not despair. Despite the huge challenges that we are facing uh, of the economy uh, and other things, uh, I'd like to invite my CEO to augment on what I've just uh, shared with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, my chairperson. Uh, Chair, I propose that we tackle these questions uh, in some order. I will deal with issues uh, that relate to preparatory work to become a bank. And then there were issues which are pointed at discrepancies of numbers between the five-year plan and the annual performance plan. Uh, my group strategy executive will handle those. And there were also questions around the interest rate fluctuations and the mitigation around that. My CFO will, will stand handy for those. Just as in preparation to the bank, uh, we are in conversation and the department keeps us informed of where they are in preparing the, the, the bill. The bill needs to be presented to the minister so she can take it to, to cabinet. My understanding it is it at a very advanced stage. The comments from the state law advisors we received and all the recommended changes are being incorporated. So there are a few, issues to be finalized here and there, more in particular about the specific definitions and what the, the, the introductory chapters of the bill should be specifying. Example, whether it should be a disestablishment of NHFC and establishing the bank or should it be the conversion of the existing structure to create a new bank. So it's simply minute and minor technical definitions that are being finalized at this stage. And that process, um, I'm very speculative, uh, Honorable Chair, I suspect should be before the minister around July, August or so. Uh, on the other side, ourselves as an institution, this is what our chair is indicating, that there are steps which we have taken and are not waiting for the promulgation of the bank in order to to be in the state of readiness. Um, we, we spoke about the structure that has been put in place, which now create a uniform 
command system. We're looking at specialist skills that will be required to deliver in the new bank and see how we can soon attract those. We embarking on an, a total enterprise-wide uh, systems overhaul, which is what our chair has been referring to, to create automation and digitize environments so we can be efficient and be able to reach out to more people out there. Uh, there was a question around response by commercial banks. What I was talking about there is that before we revive the mortgage default insurance, we have to do a market test because the last time we designed that business case was more than 10 years ago. The market shifted. At the time we were designing it, the likes of Capitec were not in existence. So what I'm saying is not so much that banks are saying no to a product like that. We need to retest their levels of appetite to serve this market segment. Secondly, in relation to what the other new players that have come in, whether this product will make sense or not, so that we design a product that is appropriate for the, the banking sector. That, that's what I meant by that. Uh, so in as far as how far to the launch, I think I've dealt with that. If I may pass on to my colleague to deal with the issues of the, the, the discrepancies. Mandu. Thank you, CE. Uh, Chair, in response to the question by Honorable Mokoto, the difference in the ENE and APP, we do know that um, when we're doing APP 2021-22, we reclassified our programs to align with more with human settlements, and we will do the alignment to the ENE. The question around why in quarters one to four, um, we're targeting different percentage levels, and this is around the internal audit report. We did that just to say from quarter one, we will not be implementing the full plan. So it is progressive. Hence, from quarter one, it's starting around 25%. And we say by quarter two, they've achieved 50%. Uh, right to the last quarter, which is 100%. So we're saying uh, it would have been unreasonable for us to say full implementation will happen in the first quarter. Hence, we are progressively updating and showing how we are uh, implementing over the quarters to the last quarter, uh, being quarter four. Um, the other question, Chair, uh, I missed the question from Honorable Tseke around the strategies. And, and please, if, if she could just re, re, uh, repeat that question. I, I didn't capture it well. And there was a question from Honorable Van around, uh, is, is what we are doing assisting the uh, low to middle income? I think it is. And, and this we can share when we present the integrated report because there we capture the full impact that we have achieved and how in, in leveraging the private sector, which talks to what the chair was highlighting of, of our 1 million attracting 4 million, the impact that does on the, on the ground. And chair, uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Viewer Guetta will answer the incubator program uh, question um, that she's dealing with that. Thank you. Good, good morning, Chair and, and members. Uh, may I, my name is Viva Guetta, may I come in on the incubator question, Chair? Um, Chair, we are looking at the incubator area You have mute yourself. We can't hear you. Sorry, Chair. Um, Chair, I was saying we 
uh, are looking and investing in terms of uh, incubator program to shape new initiatives around the incubator program. And um, it will come in categories uh, to allow uh, entrepreneurs to come through our various lending streams. So more specifically in the question was the question of developer incubator, uh, particularly women, youth and the disabled. And, uh, and it is correct that uh, that sector has largely been uh, dominated by white owned uh, big uh, developers. Um, the, the three companies that have come together and merged have had good experiences in trying incubator programs um, across the streams that they were responsible for. For example, we're coming with lessons from NHFC where there was a pilot in partnership with GPF uh, and that pilot was to finance developers uh, that are in the rental product that is for long-term finance. Uh, there was a uh, initiative in, at, 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 uh, at Nature with uh, small developers with support from, 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 from internally. And, um, and, um, and Ralph as well, had an initiative in terms of entry of uh, financing intermediaries um, and coming after the amalgamation, we are looking at the lessons learned and drawing from those and, um, and building going forward. The work that is underway, firstly, is um, we are in the process of uh, uh, collaborating with the incubator program that uh, was initiated by SHRA and uh, coming in from a perspective of mandate as well as um, uh, being a financier, we've always partnered with um, SHRA in financing HSIs and we would like to forge that partnership to make sure that the incubator program for entry of SHIs as well as, as well as ODAs is fostered and there's financing that is available. So there's work in terms of building a partnership around that incubator program. That is one stream of entry, which would be social housing and advancing trans transformation. Uh, similarly, with the developers, I said, we're drawing from lessons and we're building a new program going forward for entry. Um, contractor development uh, incubator. We have uh, programs that were in that are in place already. We want to engage strongly with um, uh, stakeholders, particularly those are affected uh, in the industry that relate to contractors, to refine products that uh, are available to make sure that they are accessed and the hurdles for entry are, are minimized. And um, we think that uh, the, the products need some tweaking here and there to make sure that entry is, is, is enhanced around contractor development. And in instances where contractors may require other aspects than finance, that is where we take contractors, small contractors, in a programmatic fashion so that uh, we deal with the, their uh, development, whether it is about um, issues of managerial skills that are required improvement in a variety of skill, key skills or issues with compliance with the statutory requirements that are associated with business. And in that category of contractors, it is when we realize that uh, what they require is more than just finance. It requires a structured program where implementation is required. And in some instances, we do partner with uh, public sector uh, entities, whether provinces or municipalities, in structuring and managing those programs that will create pathways for enterprises to enter. 
where do opportunities lie, Chair, just to raise areas that require attention? Two areas. Uh, firstly, is that um, as a financier, we are in many instances uh, market takers. That is, we do not we do not most of the time determine who has uh, been procured, and uh, and engagements are continuing with uh, stakeholders from an advocacy point of view that when employers, be it provinces or municipalities, appoint. If more of uh, the um, uh, priority groups are appointed and small enterprises are appointed, the, 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 the more we will see a number of entrepreneurs knocking on our doors for finance. And it's a pressure that we would like to, to see. But if at point of appointment, there is no strengthened output of uh, the appointment of women-owned contractors, youth-owned contractors, disabled-owned contractors, it becomes a challenge in terms of dealing with a growing portfolio of, um, of finance, and it requires alignment. Uh, secondly, um, and this is an area of procurement by developers, particularly on uh, projects and mega projects that are, are going to come upstream in terms of approvals. Um, I think it is important to influence the procurement strategies of those partnerships. And uh, we are strongly uh, engaged and led by the National Department of Human Settlements, where uh, the attempt is to strengthen the framework of um, partnering with developers, where there's a mixture of public finance that uh, requires developmental outputs, as well as private developers. And entities are called upon to respond to that. And from that point of view, as a financier with uh, whether equity or finance, it is going to be important that amongst outputs that we look at in terms of those partnerships is that the a clear procurement strategy is clear upfront how you make sure that there's entry of uh, emerging developers, there's entry of contractors, there's entry of professionals in terms of diversity so that the mega or catalytic projects that are being developed work on a transformative uh, procurement uh, strategy that is outlined upfront and part of the partnership going forward. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, NF NHFC. Uh, Shra, do you, you, yes. There was one question that has been unanswered. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. It was in relation to the sustainability due to the fluctuating prime interest rates. Um, I think so, just in terms of how are we able to combat that? I think there are uh, three several ways. Um, the first one is um, the balancing of our portfolio. Um, as I said, 90% of our loan book is actually linked to prime um, and what we need to do and which we have recommended um, to the lending team is to try and see if we can also balance um, our uh, fluctuating um, loans with um, some fixed term loans as well. But if you understand, obviously, from a fixed term basis, um, they are typically priced higher than the floating rate. Um, and this is obviously um, will depend on whether or not customers would like to mitigate that risk. Um, and as we see, as interest rates have bottomed down, it might not be likely that, um, that, that um, you know, our customers would like to take on fixed, uh, fixed loans. Um, the, the, the other way as well that we can mitigate and from a sustainability perspective, um, which will impact the bottom line, but not so much um, on the interest rate level, uh, interest rate income level 
is to increase the size of the book. So as I explained, because of the fact that we have a very high fixed uh, cost um, or a very fixed rate in terms of our expenses, once um, our book goes to scale or goes to greater scale, um, we are then able to absorb a lot more of the costs, right? Um, and therefore, from a bottom line impact, we are less impacted when um, the fluctuations happen, as we've seen in the current period. But again, this will require um, that we do have the available capital to be able to increase the book as, as, as we require. And the third thing, of course, um, from a financial risk management will be to enter into interest rate swaps, which will allow us to be able to swap the floating to a fixed rate income. But again, from an interest rate swap perspective, that's not that would be that's not something that would be looking at at the moment, uh, given obviously the restrictions um, as a three A entity. Thank you, Chair. I'm done. Chairperson, thank you very much, uh, CFO. Uh, Honorable Mukotu. Can we allow uh, them to respond to all the questions? You'll come back later. But there's another one which I've asked, which they did not answer. And it's only one. I thought maybe they could respond to it now. Can you allow me to ask that question, Chairperson? Honorable Mukut, can, can we allow them to respond to the questions? And then if you think there is one that has been left, because the department is still going to respond. If, if they have not responded, then you will come back. Let's go to Shra. Shra. Chairperson, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, Thank you for giving us this opportunity. I'm going to be very brief and then um, allow Ms. Bohane to, to respond. I, I think uh, issues that have been raised uh, by the committee are very uh, important. Um, I'm sorry uh, for not uh, greeting the Deputy Minister. Firstly, we have to strengthen the arm of regulation. And we are in the process of doing that because our role is to try and ensure that our environment is well uh, regulated for the benefit of the tenants. But also we must have a proper means test for the income bracket that uh, we are supposed to uh, to uh, take to our units because uh, there is a problem uh, around there. But also we need to have a list of tenants. We should not uh, depend on SHIs for the list of uh, people that stay there because uh, that is a government service delivery program. And uh, fourthly, uh, uh, um, SHIs uh, must uh, have a clear and um, transparent way uh, of uh, working and uh, not uh, put more money in the rent of the tenants. And that money most of the time is for the, for the middlemen. So we've said uh, water and lights must come directly from the man, min, municipality. It does not have a uh, to come through another person because uh, the figures uh, escalate. So the person that uh, is at 3,000 a rand ends up not being able uh, to keep up with the rent. 
And we've also, a, we are not a saying SHRA should a lower its standards and a credibility. When we say a, they must a, change the way a, people apply. The forms are too big and they have hurdles for the plex. And uh, those hurdles must be removed. But also we must be transparent because uh, sometimes we say the equity is a uh, 30% only to find out that uh, the SHI pays a uh, little because of a uh, its knowledge of how you can uh, get funding from other state institutions. And that should happen across the board. And that ASHRA is mostly a, in Gauteng and a Cape Town. And we must try and a, spread a, around and ensure that a, all a, provinces benefit. And so as well as a, our relationship between a, the SHIs and a, ODAs must be strengthened. And SHRA is a very small um, entity. And therefore in a small entity, you need a highly qualified uh, people and also when you implement a transition or transformation, you cannot say because at the lower end of a, the, the institution, there are many a, women then as say we have a 55 a percent, that should a, depend on the quality of the people that a, the institution is a, a, employing and also the issue of the of building the second layer of leadership extra so that uh, we do not uh, run around when uh, terms of office of the people come to an end. We've had a, a, an MOU with women in construction because uh, there are no women that are, have that have their own uh, SHIs, and uh, we think it's because of the forms that you have to fill in when you apply, and you get accredited. But uh, also, there are forms that uh, you have to fill uh, again to get uh, finances. And the strengthening of the relationship between local government and a provincial a government is very, very uh, important because uh, we all contribute uh, in this uh, uh, work. And uh, also we've said ESHRA must uh, maximize human settlement. We must uh, work with municipalities to identify buildings that are no longer used in the cities so that uh, people, more people stay closer to work. And that will be a bonus for women because uh, they can stay uh, with their kids and have a uh, time uh, to monitor their children as part of social cohesion. So we are not just a structure that uh, wants to guzzle money. We are a structure that uh, has a mandate and uh, that must follow the mandate of the government. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, yes. Um, Acting CEO, you want to add on what the chair said? Um, 
Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I am the Corporate Services Manager and not the Acting CEO Chair. Um, you, are acting, you are acting on, her, on his behalf because you are here now. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Okay. <laughs> Chair, may I, I just start on um, the questions from uh, Honorable uh, Mokoto. Just, just one from her, um, our engagement with municipalities. I just want to go back and say we also engage with uh, provinces, Chairperson. And we've managed to engage with nine provinces in the year that ended on the 31st of March 2021. And our, our main engagement um, with the provinces, especially the Northwest Chair uh, and the Northern Cape, was to establish whether there's an appetite for social housing in those areas. Um, two was also to establish whether there are restructuring zones where SRA can then establish or develop a project so that we can increase um, the projects in other. Um, Provinces. So, Chairperson, uh, we are waiting for the rental demand study out of those provinces, and we will then take it from there to see how we can then escalate upscale delivery within those provinces. And then the second question, the, the, the actual question, Chair, was around a uh, municipal support. Chairperson, we have targeted uh, for this year. However, in the year that just ended, we had engagements with seven municipalities, which is the city of Tswane, Mangawung, Kuga, Stellenbosch, George, Newcastle, and Umtlatuzi. So Chairperson, here we, we were presenting as the Shroud, we had online uh, sessions. We were presenting to, to all these uh, municipalities um, the purpose, um, the financial and organizational structuring of um, social housing programs so that they have a better understanding of what we are doing and to see how they can assist us in delivering social housing in their uh, municipalities. And, and Chairperson, we, we got we got them to provide us with dedicated officials because it's easier when you keep on dealing with one person who then uh, 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 transfer the information within the municipality and who's got a better understanding and when we pose questions or ask for approvals, statutory approvals. So person, out of these uh, sessions that we've had with the seven municipalities, uh, we are still going to engage further with them because we've received feedback from them. One is that um, the application for social housing is long and laborious. Um, so we need to assist them in that. And Chairperson just alluded to that earlier on. And then um, we also um, need to address the land transfer from parastatals to municipalities, which will make it easier for us. Um, and it forces us to then work with the HDA in, in supporting us with the negotiations. And then um, they also raised an issue that there are very few established um, social housing operating within chosen municipalities. So that's something that you also need to look into in the future. And we also clarified their roles or the expectations uh, from the various municipalities. And the last one, Chairperson, which is key, is that um, a feedback session also has to uh, uh, be held to address the land packaging support. So they are, the municipalities should put uh, into their land preparation process, considering their limited resources, um, need to assist them because we do have um, chairperson services. Chairperson, um, there are various uh, questions again asked. Um, I will combine Honorable Mokoto and Honorable Mvana's question, which is around um, upscaling delivery of social housing on the ground, um, where our social housing growth plan is at the moment. And I think Honorable Mvana raised questions of, um, she said, we've, got, we've identified challenges. Do we then have solutions to these challenges? So if I can just pick on, on a few, um, for us not to be able to uh, deliver, um, it's because of 
some of our SHIs have problems in assessing that funding. Now, Chair, if you recall, NHFC has a limited target compared to uh, what we have, but in the past, Chairperson, um, uh, NHFC has provided, we've actually prepared a pie chart to see um, how we get the debt funding. NHFC actually contributes 33% of our debt funding to um, the social housing. Then we have APSA, um, we have Emergence, we have TAF, um, we have JCB Properties, Investigo, RMB, NetBank, and NEF that are also uh, providing us with debt funding. So we keep on having engagements, uh, Chairperson, with our other financiers. And the reason why we engage with other financiers is to create an awareness of um, the social housing pro uh, product, um, to then tell them how it works, um, whether they become primary a, a, a creditor and what happens in the case that, where there are unfortunate situations. And most of them have come on board. The recent one that we have is Sinchep and that thing. Um, and say, in the year that has just passed, we also had an investment seminar, and particularly aimed at uh, talking to the private sector to come and participate in, in the social housing sector. We, we have learned that um, social housing regulatory authority on its own cannot deliver social housing on the ground. It needs to collaborate and foster relationship with um, key stakeholders. And now I've just addressed one, which is uh, the uh, financiers. And then the second one, chairperson, would be uh, municipalities. I think I've alluded to the municipalities, chairperson, where they have uh, land available and they can assist us with, with um, restructuring of zone um, so that we can be able to uh, build or develop social housing in those targeted uh, land parcels, chairperson. Um, and then we have also, remember the shroud doesn't go out on the market and say, hey, come and apply. Individuals will come in and apply and it can be any organization type. So we then took a focus that from now on, we will rather be proactive and then go out to the market and issue expression of interest, uh, particularly targeting at designated groups. Um, and say uh, we're going to assess because we've already done that in the year that has just passed, we're going to assess and see how we can uh, assist um, those particular SHIs. Like I said earlier on, we then categorize them in a um, social house institution that requires assistance before accreditation. Because by doing that, it's, uh, we're ensuring that none of the applicants are actually thrown out. We will then take them through our incubation process, um, a program, and then capacitate them when necessary. Eventually, when they are ready, investment ready, we take them to the credible pipeline. Because Jefferson wouldn't want to take um, institutions that are not ready and put them in the credible pipeline, award them strategy, and commit funds um, that ordinarily would have been used on an institution that could have delivered uh, instead of one that is going to take more than two years because of some weaknesses that needs to be um, addressed. Um, Chairperson, municipal approval also has been a challenge. Um, and the challenge is, as we uh, identified, the root cause was the fact that there was no appreciation or appetite for social housing in, in various municipalities because they, could, they didn't understand um, what is required. So now that we are proactively going out to the municipalities, Chairperson, uh, created this awareness, it's quite easy to get a municipal approval, the understanding of the agency uh, when we ask for uh, assistance from them, Chairperson. Chair, uh, I've, I've just took just a key ones is this is not exhaustive. So all that I want to indicate is that we are doing something on the ground already, Chairperson, um, to address the key challenges that you are faced with, especially to ensure that we are able to deliver social housing uh, on the ground. And, and, Chair, and then there was a question around um, 
human resources. Chairperson, we are yet to review our org structure, and that is going to be done before June, Chairperson. Um, the, structure, the review is going to look at positions that are currently not required, um, that will not assist the SHRA in executing a, our mandate with this particular focus, uh, especially regulating. So um, we have identified a few, but uh, we still need to have a full discussion uh, amongst EXCO and uh, have a buy-in from our council. And then uh, putting all those other positions that the honorable member referred to the CRO in the capacitation of the regulations. Um, chairperson, then the question that would be asked is, then how do we finance them? With those that have been funded that we will either defer to um, outer years, we will then fund the ones that are uh, quite urgent and imminent in the current financial year. Um, and of course, the other stream of funding will be from um, professional fees because the business analyst amongst other um, duties will be those that are performed by our uh, consultants. But Chair, like I indicated earlier on, we need to be cautious and ensure that as we transition from using consultants to internal resources, the SRA is not left with a gap um, that will create uh, problems in accreditation. Um, Chairperson, my SRA is funded under the um, IT expenditure. Um, the bulk of money was paid in the year that has just passed, which is the development cost. Now, what um, is, is currently uh, being billed to us would be the license fee and the support. Um, and chairperson building assessment uh, fees are included in the professional fees. And an overarching statement, chairperson, um, when it comes to our OPEX, um, we have seen the past three years we have noticed that our actual expenditure, actual operating expenditure has far uh, surpassed the OPEX uh, allocation baseline. And Chairperson, by reprioritizing um, and trying to eliminate some of the costs that don't have a negative impact, um, it's an exercise that we are currently on, including the one of uh, reviewing the OX structure and, and um, also reducing the um, professional fees. Um, but on average, Chairperson, um, our actual expenditure have surpassed baseline by about 25% on an annual basis. So it's something that we, we are working on, Chairperson. Okay, I think I've addressed uh, all the questions, but I'll be glad to be reminded I have that has been posted. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mokoto. Honorable Mokoto. Uh, DM Chwete. Oh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair, for the opportunity to present the annual report, strategic plans and budgets of two entities. Chair, there was a, a question directed to me uh, about the bill for the bank. Yes, it is answered, but I would like to elaborate more. The bill for the bank has been drafted. It has been sent to the state law advisors for scrutiny, and it will be presented to the cabinet in May this year. And then it will go for public comments. That is important, Chair. 
it cannot be finalized uh, without going for public comment. Uh, Chair, the, the CEOs have answered and responded, the CEO has expired, and we are in the process of filling that position, Chair. The advert for the position of the CEO has been released and is closing on the 3rd of May, 2021. Thereafter, the process of appointing the CEO will unfold. Definitely, that will be known by the portfolio committee once it's finalized. And again, Chair, I would like to thank the two entities, the CEOs, the chairs of the entities for the responses and also thank the portfolio committee for giving us time to come and present to them. And I know, Chair, that you are meeting again in the afternoon for the other two entities. And I would like to say again, thank you, particularly you, the Chair, for the good work and the patience and advising us where we go wrong and also all members of the committee for giving us the strength and advising us. I thank you so much, Chair. Thanks. Um, thank you very much, uh, TM. Uh, I see the hands of uh, Honorable Sikhoi. Honorable Sikhoi. Yo, your network is very bad. Honorable, Bye. Honorable Khoi, your network is very bad. We can't hear anything. Am I on now? Um, yes, yes, uh, if we can start from the beginning. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it, it, the, my network has been losing me for some time. Thank you that we have uh, taken my hand. Just two areas. I think the first one is just a comment. We need to appreciate this program because originally, the low income group, which is the majority, has been excluded in programs of this nature. This is a confirmation that poor people are bankable. They are bankable if the systems is made in a way that addresses their plight. The, the presenter raised an issue that one of the risk areas um, there's a huge corruption which then distances the investors in terms of uh, uh, the programs. But in the mitigation, I could not get what are the mitigations processes that they are engaging. Because by virtue of this program, it's too fragmented. That's the nature. But it, it needs also very clear systems that are well coordinated for it to be stable. I, I would like to hear uh, what are the systems, because when you talk corruption, you have got to have strong systems that are going to assist you upfront so that you, have, you, you, do, you don't react. Also there is an issue of the lack of land availability. I want to check because I thought the programs are so individualistic. Um, what is the need for a big piece of land um, uh, for, the, for the entity? Is, is it need that individuals are able to identify their piece of land and able to make uh, applications in terms of the microloans? Those are the few questions that I wanted to raise. Otherwise, this program uh, talks about the transformation of this country with our people. That's why I'm saying thank you very much 
that this program is progressing and it's becoming uh, stable uh, 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 within uh, our democratic uh, government. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Honorable Sufai. I know that you have a problem of uh, network. That's why I, I didn't force you to open your camera. Um, Honorable Mokotu. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. The question which I wanted a NHFC to answer because I felt they did not answer it is this one. Why is program three, informal settlement upgrading program included as, as a program in the APP, but not applicable to NHFC? And I also have a comment. The committee should note, should take note that a new target was implemented in 2021 2020 financial year for the number of subsidy applications approved. The value for this target for 2021 uh, financial year to 2022, however, was er erroneously omitted. And then one other question, which I'm not sure if it was answered or not because I was kicked out of uh, by network, uh, is directed to Shra. I would like to know Will additional funds be appropriated to this target in program four? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable Koto. Thank you very much. Um, let me get uh, the entities to respond to the questions as raised by members. We can start with the uh, N. NHFC. Thank you, Chair. I thought I would ask my group strategy executive to deal with the discrepancy on what is called informal segment, but appearing on, on our um, annual performance plan. And I don't want to be very speculative, but I'm aware that there's a policy shift that the department is pushing at the moment, uh, that of moving away from building the NG, uh, BNGs for individuals, but to allocation of land, which is called uh, rapid land release, and then enable individuals to build their top structures themselves. I'm only anticipating that it, it does not appear in this current year moving forward that national housing will be expected to support individuals who have uh, access pieces of land, but also there's another program to upgrade informal settlements. The process of that upgrade will enable people who can borrow to put up their own structures. And uh, that's the link to national housing. Imandu? Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, the informal settlements, currently uh, it is being done through our incremental housing, but we haven't been tracking it as an upgrade to informal settlements because we will just record our impact through incremental housing. So we will uh, develop that through our intermediaries, that is tracked so that we can reflect and report on the, the how we are contributing towards informal settlement. Currently, uh, it's just classified in one basket within uh, incremental housing. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Shra. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, on the issue of fraud and corruption, Chairperson, we have started internally um, we had a fraud, we have a fraud uh, prevention strategy that is currently in place. We have a fraud prevention policy that is in place. What needs to be enhanced per person which we are currently working on and it's going to be presented in July is a fraud Can you management. Can open the camera if you don't have oh. a problem? Sorry. No, no, no. Sorry, Chairperson, I thought I had it on. 
Um, so we do have a fraud prevention strategy, a fraud management plan um, that is currently being reviewed. So that is updated with um, the current um, incidents that um, have occurred. Um, and chairperson, we, we are leaving the values of the Shra. And the one that is um, elevated when it comes to a fraud and corruption chairperson is, is that each and every official of the Shra is accountable to the South African citizenry. And we, we have made us aware that if any of the officials are involved in any corrupt or fraudulent activities, they are actually eroding the capital grant that is meant uh, for the targeted beneficiaries. Um, so we are very conscious when, when we deal with a um, service provider equally chairperson. Um, the automation of, of um, the processes is also meant to avoid um, contact uh, among people. So your applications will only be um, considered when they have been submitted electronically. And there, there'll always be an electronic footprint to see when and when who changed, you know, um, chairperson and will have triggers. And um, we are ensuring that there is definitely segregation of duties. We're ensuring that um, when people meet, um, they shouldn't be having meetings alone with a potential SHI. Um, it must be, it must always be two or more officials that are meeting to talk about the business of the firm. Um, and chairperson, uh, I think the other one over and above that, so chairperson is we are currently focused inward and then we'll have roadshows um, about um, the fraud prevention strategy of the SHRA. And we will communicate it to all the stakeholders that you deal with and, and to the public at large, Chairperson, uh, especially um, targeting, we, we, we can't say we're going to target the aspiring applicants. That's the reason why we're just going to have it as broad as um, to, to the whole community. And then Chairperson, on, on the question of, of land, um, Chair, we are going to uh, implement the protocol that we have with HDA. Um, and uh, uh, we, we, HDA has already identified some inner city um, uh, projects or properties um, that we are going to use for particularly designated uh, members. And if an individual has identified land and comes and applied to the SHRA and the land is not in a um, dedicated RZ, we will then be in touch with the municipality um, and see whether we can apply so that that particular land is then included in um, the restructuring zone. That person is very important for members to know that we cannot build anything outside the restructuring zone. Otherwise, it's going to be deemed as irregular expenditure uh, because we haven't complied with the law. Um, the question chair raised by Honorable Mokoto, I wonder if I should be addressing that, but I'll try. Will additional funds be appropriate to the chair? Not in um, the short uh, run maybe in a long run where uh, we are able to deliver and it's evident that we, uh, our delivery has upscaled, then um, additional funding um, may be allocated um, after interaction with the department chairperson. Thank you. I hope I've answered um, adequately, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh... Action C C O C E C E O. Um, honorable Mem there was a honorable ticket. There was a um, request that you repeat your question from N N H F C. Um,
Honorable Tseke. Oh, Chair, thanks very much. Um, I, I, I'm fine. I'm covered, uh, Chair. I can deal with this matter outside the meeting. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Member. Um, thank you very much, uh, both the Chair of um, SHRA and um, NHFC and the, the, the entities um, and the department. Thank you very much for sharing uh, what you are going to do um, this financial year uh, with the committee. And uh, we, we hope that uh, uh, we'll continue to interact with yourselves to make sure that indeed areas that you have identified um, of gap market are being implemented um, and, and the committee would continue to support yourselves for you to achieve your, your goal and, 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 and objective as you have set out in your strategic plan and APP. Thank you very much for availing yourself. Thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned. Uh, we will reconvene at three o'clock. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Chair.